Hello and welcome to the Irish East Seat. Previously, I was explaining the background to the construction of tower houses, more often called castles, here in Ireland. Tower houses, such as this one at Gort Michaelis in County Tipperary, began to be built in the early 15th century and continued to be constructed effectively for the next 200 years. It's thought there may be up to 2,000 of them around the country, although many, such as that at Carrick Gorris, County Kildare, are in a very poor state of repair. While a building like Ratting Castle, County Westmeath, could be defended against attackers armed with bows and arrows or even guns, it hadn't much of a chance against assault from substantial cannons, which began to be widely used in warfare from the mid-16th century onwards. In some ways it's surprising so many tower houses have survived at all, given the enormous upheavals that Ireland experienced for about 150 years, up until the late 1600s. And yet, during times of peace, many tower houses were not only restored, but also extended, a well-known example being Loch Moe Castle, County Tipperary. Here, in the early 1600s, the Purcell family added a vast semi-fortified house onto one end of an existing tower house. Likewise, Limana Castle, County Clare, the right-hand section of which began as a plain five-storey tower house built around 1480 by Turlock O'Brien, King of Thomond. In 1648, his descendant, Connor O'Brien, extended the tower by building onto it a four-storey manor house. Once peace was restored to the country from the late 1600s onwards, owners of these tower houses had to find ways of adapting their homes to make them more comfortable and suited for modern living. From the front, Ballymore Castle, County Galway, looks like a typical two-storey Regency villa. This house replaced an earlier one built in the 17th century, but in both instances, the building was attached at the rear to an earlier 16th century tower house. This was by no means an unusual arrangement, and there are many similar instances found throughout the country. Let's look now at one particular example. Grange Castle, County Kildare, is most likely a 15th century tower house, one of a number of defensive properties built by the de Birmingham family in this part of the country where they had long held sway. At some date, probably in the early part of the 17th century, the tower was modernised, as can be seen by the larger window openings, the ornamental parapet, and the tall chimney stacks, which indicate an increased number of hearths, although some of them were simply decorative rather than functional. While still defensive in character, Grange was now more comfortable, thanks to increased light in the rooms, which held more chimney pieces as well. In 1735, Walter Birmingham sold Grange to Thomas Tyrrell, member of another local family. The Tyrrells decided to add a house to the property. It's a simple, single-storey, three-bay villa. Access is through a very handsome limestone pedimented door case with heraldic devices carved in the tympanum and the Tyrrell family motto, Veritas Via Vitae. This is a variant of Christ's words in St. John's Gospel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. To the rear of the villa, double doors led to the old tower house. Its succession of rooms stacked one on top of the other, converted into sleeping quarters, all accessed via a door on the ground floor. Grange Castle is an example of how old tower houses were adapted for more modern living. Unhappily, in recent years, Grange has stood unoccupied. But in the next episode, I want to look at a couple of examples of tower houses which were extended and adapted and are still very much in use. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching the Irish Ace Theatre. Goodbye.